morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to our time of worship and praise. We'll begin our service this morning with our first hymn, hymn 190. We now implore God the Holy Ghost. Seeking His grace, 
for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, and holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through the Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his sons to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. We now join in reading responsibly our psalm for the day, Psalm 126. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the desert. For those who sow with tears will leave the songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying seed to the end. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We pray, O God, you rule over all things in wisdom and kindness. Take away everything that may be harmful and give us whatever is good. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture lesson for today is from the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 5, beginning with verse 12. Here the Lord gives the commandment concerning the Sabbath day, a day of physical rest, but also a day that's set aside for hearing God's word and worshiping. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. As the Lord your God has commanded you, six days you shall labor and do all your work, the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son, or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your ox, your donkey, or any of your animals, or any foreigner residing in your towns, so that your male and female slaves may rest as you do. Remember that you are slaves in Egypt, that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians in chapter 4, beginning with verse 5. Paul writes, For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory, displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. 
We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that this life may also be revealed in our mortal body, so that death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The gospel lesson for today is in the gospel of Mark in chapter 2, beginning with verse 23. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields. And as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some of the heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. This is the Gospel of the Lord. The congregation may be seated. We continue with our next hymn, hymn 286, The Law Commands and Makes Us Know.
Meditation this morning is taken from the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 5, verse 12. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded you. And also from Mark chapter 2, verse 28. The Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. This is God's word. <clears throat> Dear friends, Christ. In the 15th chapter of the book of Numbers, the account is given of a man who was caught gathering wood on the Sabbath day. Those who found him brought the man to Moses, and God commanded Moses to put the man to death. They were to take him outside the camp and stone him to death. God is serious about his commandments. So, should we be surprised then that the Pharisees were so serious when they thought that Jesus' disciples were breaking the Sabbath? See, the problem was not that the Pharisees took the Sabbath too seriously and needed to lighten up. No, the problem was that the Pharisees failed to see what the Sabbath was really all about. That word Sabbath means rest. But the Sabbath was not all about outward rules and, and regulations to enforce a day off. No, that Sabbath rest was a picture, a picture that pointed ahead to the true rest that the Messiah would bring. And Jesus Christ has gained that true rest for us. He alone is the true Sabbath rest, the rest we so desperately need. And he gives us that that rest. He, he calls to us, come to me all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Rest for your souls. And so, today let's remind ourselves then that we find our Sabbath rest in Christ. So that we can rest in his wounds, rest in his works and rest in his word. What is it that burdens our souls? In a word, guilt. Well, we can try to hide it, but our consciences know. Our consciences know the, the words that come from an angry heart, that intent to, to tear down, to, to hurt somebody. Our consciences know how often we chase after the things of this world <coughs> while pushing God and his word into the background. Our consciences know how often our thankfulness and gratitude is drowned out by coveting the things that we don't have worried about how are we ever going to hold on to those things that we do have. And our consciences know that God knows all these things much better than we do. Yes, guilt can be quite a burden. Well, we could try to bury that burden Pretending that, well, our sins really aren't all that bad. I mean, not an axe murderer. Or we could maybe try to balance out the scales. Work at trying to do as many good things as, as the, the wrong that we do. We could just pretend that, well, if, if I'm sorry enough, well, That'll somehow ease the burden 
of my joy. Yet all of that fails. The hymn writer who wrote Rock of Ages, he, he nailed it right on the head when he said, Not the labors of my hands can fulfill the law's demands. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save, and thou alone. Only Jesus can lift that burden of guilt and sin from us. And he did it by lifting it up, taking it into his own body, carrying that, that weight for us, and nailing it to the cross with him. And so we can find rest in, in Jesus' wounds. Because yes, he was stricken, smitten, and afflicted for us. We can find rest in his wounds because his blood paid the full price for all of our sins to, to set us free from sin and guilt. Amen. We can find rest by being like Doubting Thomas, seeing the wounds in Jesus' hands and feet, and confess, my God, and my Lord, our God has sent us a, a Savior to bring us true rest from the burden of, of sin and guilt, and brings us peace with God by the forgiveness of sins. Amen and the removing of our guilt. When the Lord commanded the, the people of Israel to rest on the Sabbath, he was pointing them ahead to the true rest that the Messiah would bring. And Jesus did exactly that. And so yes, we can find rest in Jesus' wounds. So we find rest in his wounds we can also find rest in Jesus' works. Now, we know we can't earn our forgiveness, so the question might come, well then what is it that would motivate us to want to do good things in our lives? Are we driven by the hope of making God happy? But sometimes we can inadvertently or wrongly plant that thought in the minds of, of, of children. Did it ever happen to you when you were a kid? Maybe your parents or a Sunday school teacher said to you, do you think Jesus is happy with what you are doing? Now the intention good, improve our behavior. And yet what that statement does is turn Jesus from a loving Savior into a frowning God. But really, it works the exact opposite. Everything that Jesus did, his perfect life and innocent suffering and death, all of his works, he did for us. Was God happy with what Jesus did? Yes. So twice we hear him say from heaven, this is my son whom I love, with him I'm well pleased. And everything that Jesus did was pleasing to the Father and his works count as ours. And so we can rest in Christ's works. We don't we're, we're not motivated by the thought that we have to make God happy, but rather we rejoice in the fact that in Christ, God is already pleased with us. And we have his favor. We can rest in Christ's works. Amen. So then, what is it that actually motivates us to do good? Are we driven by goals and purposes? Are we driven by the idea of, well, maybe I, I need to pay it forward. You know, the one good deed deserves another. 
Are we driven by the fear of losing our salvation or suffering in this life when we mess up? None of that is resting in Christ's works. On the other hand, resting in Christ's works doesn't mean that, that we can be spiritually lazy or, or apathetic. Doesn't mean that we can think, well, okay, Jesus did it all for me, so no, I can live how, however I want to. No, resting in Christ's works means that we daily put off our, our sinful nature. It means that we let our new self, created in us by the Holy Spirit through word and sacrament, strengthened by the Lord's Supper, we let that guide and direct us through life. When we rest in Christ's works, then his love fills us with love for him and for one another. And that love moves us to do what is good. It fills us with, with energy, with eagerness, with thankfulness that can't help but want to serve the Lord. So let's rest and in Christ's works. Finally, we can rest in Christ's word. Why do we need to rest in his word? Because his word is what brings his love to us. His word is powerful and, and effective, like that sharp double-edged sword that, that penetrates the heart. And that word then lifts the burden of guilt from us. Our new selves delight in God's word. We find joy in that word because it gives us the strength to do what is good, the strength to love others, the strength to follow Jesus no matter what it takes. Jesus told his followers if the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. We are free to love him who died for us. The Lord commanded physical rest for the people of Israel on the Sabbath day, not just so they could have a day off, but that they would also devote that day to worship, to praise, to hearing God's word. So also we then, let us devote this day to hearing God's word. And, and not just this day, but every day. Make God's word a prominent part of our life so that every day can be holy to the Lord. Rest in his word until Jesus finally gives us that eternal rest, our heavenly rest. Until then, yes, sometimes this journey through life may seem dreary and, and hard. We may fess or confront troubles and, and trials in life. And yet, what those things really do is they remind us how much we need Jesus. So, let us rest in Christ. Rest in his wounds. Rest in his works. Rest in his word. Amen. Amen. And may he who has begun his good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us join in confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. <laughs> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, a one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven.
incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. We'll continue and join him in singing the first verse of hymn 268, Lamb of God, you're in hope.
to hear us. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your kingdom come to us and many others. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith, that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your hands we commend all who are in need, praying for them at all times. Your will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Grant us our daily bread. Preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lastly, O Heavenly Father, Deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. We conclude our worship with hymn 316, O Jesus, blessed Lord to thee. <coughs>
or ask to return your uh, baby bottle or cardboard bank to the cradle on the handbell cabinet. Uh, starting next week, Sunday, following uh, the service, we'll have uh, refreshments after church and then our 19-minute Bible study up here in the uh, sanctuary. Uh, and right after this service, in fact, right after I'm done speaking, I assume then, uh, we are have a special congregation uh, meeting to discuss the uh, shingling of the uh, church roof. All members are urged to stay. Wish you all the Lord's blessings to this coming week. Thank you.